What is going on, everybody? So uh, we'll have Don joining us shortly here. Um, we'll give it a minute here to get some people joining us. Uh, if you can't catch the whole thing, it'll be posted here on our site, um, along with on our uh, YouTube channel as well. Um, so just some background for Don. He's a uh, two-time Cerberus finisher, similar to what we uh, we had Ian uh, yesterday on. Um, both of them had finished both Cleveland and Sarasota. Um, both of them also attempted the uh, Colorado Springs event uh, that we had about a week or so ago. Um, and again, that was a black class. Again, we were not planning for a black class, um, but that was a black class, so nobody finished that one. Um, it's a hard event. That's all I got to say about it. Um, but uh, Don will be joining us shortly here. And uh, you guys can put questions in the comments. Um, and I got my phone out here so I can check it because sometimes it doesn't show up on the uh, page here. Um, but I will relay those questions to Don, you know, as we go through and discuss basically his, his three uh, Cerberus events, um, the two finishes, and then the, uh, the one withdrawal for the uh, Colorado event. Um, again, Don, also has done the throwdown events. So he's done one of our throwdown events here in Twinsburg, uh, Ohio. So he finished second in that. Uh, first place was Kevin Larson. And then uh, I think third place was Steve, I'm gonna probably butcher the name, but I think it's Kospiak. Um, so he was a second place finisher for that event as well. Um, uh, that was a, back in, I think it was June, June or somewhere around there. Um, He's part of Cleveland Area Rucking Crew. He's one of the guys that leads a lot of the stuff down in the uh, Akron, Canton area. Um, so, you know, I've known Don for a long time. Um, going all the way back to a Ranger Panty Ruck where he first joined us uh, for rucking. So, um, <coughs> when he gets on here, well, I'm sure we'll talk about a lot of that stuff. Um, right now, if you guys do have questions you're going to want to ask, by all means, you can start throwing questions out here. Um, and then... Uh, all right. Yep. So start throwing questions out and I'll make sure when Don joins us that I'll uh, uh, pose those questions to him. So uh, Jonathan, I got you. I see you on there. So when he comes on, I will uh, make sure we ask that question for uh, Don here as far as what does maximum effort mean to Donald. Um, if you guys don't know Donald, he is a Deadpool fan um, and he uh, displays it on his rucks and uh, his Facebook and Instagram and everything like that. So he, uh, he, he does a lot of stuff where he puts posts out there for, uh, things. And he, he talks about maximum effort as far as, uh, the Deadpool saying goes. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into Cleveland probably we'll start off with. So we'll talk about the Cleveland event. So I'm repping the, the first class we ever had Cleveland Cerberus event, um, that we had out here. Uh, so we'll talk about that and his finish there. Um, Sarasota, you know, him, again, him and Ian both finished those events. Um, and then Colorado Springs. So, um, Colorado Springs, you know, I think, uh, I think some people underestimated how difficult that one was going to be. Again, we started off sort of ramping up a little bit between the events, you know, Cleveland was, you know, I don't want to say easy, but it was the easier of the three events. Um, Sarasota, we bumped it up a little bit. Uh, and then uh, when we got to Colorado Springs, it was pretty much like, hey, here we go. This is probably going to be the hardest one. And we're going to, you know, this is going to probably be the, uh, the kind of level that you'll see in Charleston and wherever the next event is, um, you know, wherever that may be. We don't know yet, but hey, hey everyone. Uh, what's going on, man? Oh, nothing. Just getting my son situated. Uh... I originally thought I wasn't going to have him today, and then uh, I'm having him today instead of Friday. So I oh, got okay. my iPad to, to buy me some time. So gotcha, gotcha. Hey, if you got to go at any point, just let us know. It's all good. Oh no, he'll never. He'll be on that thing for an hour if I let him. So it's no big no, deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Electronics these days. So uh, you know, basically, you're going to run the show here. So whatever you want to talk about, it's just sort of laid back chit chat. Um, you know, again, I've already introduced, you know, your, your accolades as far as uh, the heavy oh. drop training program goes, um, HDT events and stuff with uh, two-time finisher for Cerberus. Um, 
throw down you got you know the second place on uh, the second place right if i remember yep. right yeah, the throw down, place, uh, yeah. The Twinsburg event um yeah so i mean you know let's let's just dive in cleveland event sarasota training yeah um so. whatever you feel comfortable talking about um let's just chit chat a little bit and have a good time all right so um first off i'm a member of Cleveland area rucking crew, which is Brian's club. It's probably one of the oldest clubs, uh, to my knowledge, one of the originals. So, uh, cool to be a part of them. Um, I first got familiar with heavy drop, uh, actually three years ago to almost a week. Cause I won a free round, um, back in 2019 when I was training for my first HTL and then, uh, did that round. Um, and I did a bunch of rounds after that, which that round was huge and uh, helping get me ready, you know, for my HTL. So it was nice, perfect timing. Cause I think the round ended the week of my hev the heavy started. So it yeah. worked out perfect. And um, it happens sometimes like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, or, uh, you know, you got to finagle an event in the middle of a round. Uh, yeah. I actually heard, um, it was actually Cerberus, Colorado. Kyle was talking like he was still going to do his 12 miler that Sunday <laughs> to try to squeeze yeah. it in. I think we talked him out of that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He he needed yeah. to just take it easy for once. But um, there's a reason he was med drop. You know, it's not like it's just like <laughs> yeah. the games and we just said no, you can't continue. There's a reason why he was med drop. So he probably needs to take it easy for a day or two. Yeah, but, yeah, and I mean, you know, Kyle. Know, so yeah, I know Kyle, and like you guys gave him plenty of opportunity you know it, the timing was when you guys had that break to even see if he'd recover a little bit and unfortunately his body was just saying yeah. not today dude his stomach yeah i mean know. and it, it was a tough pill to swallow for him and us i mean you know he was still producing you know throughout the event um yeah. and, and he had you know he finished the last couple workouts like we got to the island workouts and and liz finished all three i think uh the other two two or three of them, uh, I think most of them got, did not finishes for those sections, which they didn't get any points because um, yeah. they didn't finish the workout. But I think Kyle was the only one out of the other three that was finishing. I think he finished two out of the three workouts. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he, he wasn't puking a lot. It was small amounts and it was, the fluids was, fluids were sort of staying down. Like it wasn't like large quantities of fluid coming yeah. out. Um, but it was enough that, you know, there was concern. And we yeah. didn't want to take any chances with it, um, especially going into the night navigation section, um, you know. Yeah, but. which I, which that brings up a good point. Why I like the HDT events and the Cerberus events is like you guys really pay attention to safety to the yep. point where um, it's kind of funny. Like, uh, as I reflect back on the previous two, like Sarasota in particular, um, it's February, it's five degrees up here you know so when i'm doing my training outside it's zero degrees out and then i go to florida yep. and it's like 85 and humid oh yeah and i remember in the first hour and a half like my heart rate spiked i felt dizzy i felt like crap and i was afraid to say anything because i didn't want to be med dropped so i just was like i'll ride this out and if i start puking then it'll, i know there's an issue and i ended up being fine but it took about three i actually I didn't feel okay till we got through that whole first round of uh, workouts at the gym. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, no, Sarasota was hot. That was for yeah. sure. You guys were, I mean, I, I think everybody saw the uh, live video of the finish where my shirt that was red matched my arms that were exposed. <laughs> yeah. um, like I said to Ian yeah. yesterday, it was the worst hand lines I've ever had. Um, but yeah, it, it was sunny. It was hot that last bit of the Sarasota event, you guys were basically on a, uh, a frying pan in the, uh, um, doing God of chaos for 30 minutes. So. Yeah. That, that, uh, that God of chaos felt like, uh, that 60 pound sandbag felt like an 80 at that oh, point. Yeah, and sure. it wasn't even, it's not even like they were waterlogged. Like you never had to throw them in the no. ocean or they, I think no my need bag, to. <laughs> yeah, my bag only weighed like, not even a half pound more than what started. Now Cleveland, it weighed a little more because we were doing, you know, the quarter mile death tosses through, you know, there was a big puddle at the bottom of that hill yeah. and you couldn't avoid it because it was so big. Yeah. So sandbag. There was goose there. shit too. You guys piled on the goose shit too. <sighs> My sandbag smelled terrible even after washing it for like. <laughs> I didn't know there was goose shit down there actually. I, when I walked through <laughs> it, I didn't see it. 
So you well, guys just happen to find the one slick spot of goose shit that you guys drag your stuff through. So, yeah. So, you know, I guess since we're talking about service one now, um, I'll start with the beginning of that because <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, you know, when service one came about, I was like training for another event and uh, I was really focused on another event. And then I happened to have my son that weekend. So for like most of the time leading up to it, I, was, I didn't know if I was going to be able to do Cerberus one because I want to miss time with him and everything. And then, um, you know, Ian and Jason kind of talked me into it. They're like, dude, it's in our hometown. Like, you know, it's 40 minutes away from where I live. Brian's putting it on. We got to do it to support Brian. I was like, okay, but I'm, I'm worried because I have no idea what to expect. You know, I didn't know if it was going to be like a, you know, yelling, screaming, a lot of mind games, you know, beat down at the beginning, or if it was going to be, I had no clue, you know, and uh, yeah. it, it, like, I remember um, you gave us the kit list and it said like six liters of water, uh, the shovel, everything. So I remember talking with Kevin and Steve Reiners and uh, we all packed out our event rocks with the whole kit list with full bladders to see if we could do it before we went because we didn't know if you were going to say, all right, guys, you can't use your kit bags. Everything has to be in this ruck. So <laughs> it was tight. And then even in, you know, in Colorado, uh, when they had, when Greg had us lay out all of our kit and then put it in our ruck, I made everything fit, but there was a lot of people having issues. Uh, it was definitely a str I think Troy struggled a lot because he had a lot of bulky stuff. And, uh, yeah, yeah. but in Cleveland, it was funny because like I, I had no, no idea what to expect. Um, I kind of knew there'd be heavy drop workouts, obviously, but I didn't know. Yeah, so I knew there would be that. I knew Shredder would have us do something kind of cool because my HTL was actually with Shredder. Um, yeah. And I remember that summer before Service One, I did a couple of GBF events in North Carolina. So I felt confident knowing, like, I've met, I've done an event under all three guys because I count the, you know, one of my favorite patches, my. Car car car. Car. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. When we were all training for team assessment, and I was like, "Hey, can we do a, can we do a welcome party to get us ready?" And you're like, "Okay." And then next thing I know, there's two welcome parties, you know, four hours apiece, <laughs> one late at night, one early in the morning, and uh, it was a lot of fun though. That was like, yeah. that was actually a really good time, and I was surprised that we didn't see. Well, some of this was actually in Colorado with the the sandbag rope drags you had yeah. them do, and. But we didn't see any of those in, um, you know, Cleveland or Florida. Um, nope. But Cleveland keep was it fresh. You do, you do, and uh, Cleveland was unique because, you know, we obviously were in your area. You know, you've done so many rucks and everything, and uh, we've done so much stuff together in the area. So, you had this big playground that you really knew well. So I was wondering. Yeah. You know, and we did. I want to say Cleveland, we did more miles than I thought we were going to do. Um, There's a lot of miles on Cleveland compared to the others. Yeah, yeah. Cleveland was a lot of miles. And, um, you know, the HDT workouts were cool. We did uh, Shredder. It was kind of nice because Shredder, when he kind of took over in the parking lot at the gym before we left to do some other movements with Shredder, which I'm so glad there was no semi-tires at <laughs> at. Florida or Colorado. We could have had them. We could have got, I'm sure we could have got them if we wanted, but. I know. I mean, because in Cleveland, I remember we were going through that field and we had to throw all the sandbags and all the tires. And those tires felt like they weighed 400 pounds after we got the mm -hmm. sandbags in them. And we were kind of carrying them and that just ended. And he's like, all right, there's too much water here. We got to turn around and go back. And then, you know, we went back and uh, everyone was, you know, Reiner's almost lost a shoe, I think, and some mud, and you know, because he was leading the way. And uh, yeah. that event was a lot of fun. Um, but like I said, there was a lot of miles. I remember the first, like, it was before the navigation part were pass fail, like Sarasota and then um, Colorado, you know. So Greg had us do that, and he said, be back by midnight or, you know, try to hit all the points, but if not, be here at midnight. So yep. Rhodes, myself, and Kevin, we, we were it's supposed to be individual. We all linked up anyway. And yeah, of course, obviously being numbers with Kevin and, and safety and numbers. Yeah. So being with Kevin and John, they're like, oh, we can hit all the points. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And then next thing you know, we're like miles away and hitting the last <laughs> point. And it's already like quarter till midnight. And John's like, 
we're not even close to making this. It's like survival now. So Kevin takes us on the Buckeye trail and he's like, guys, I know this trail, it's no big deal. And here we're like dying because it's just like awful, you know? Yeah. Buckeye trail is legit, man. And especially that was August. So it was probably still a little bit muddy too. Oh yeah. It was, it was rough. And like, so kind of, you know, after doing a few events, like longer events, I took them out when I knew that we were not going to make it back in time. So I assumed like there was going to be no break because we were going to be so late. So yeah. I started eating some food because I knew I was like, we got like three miles. This is like at least 45 minutes to an hour before we're back. So I was eating while we were on that trail because I knew that if we get back and there's no break, at least I had something in my stomach before it's just like full on, yeah. you know, you don't know what we we're going to do. And then that was probably the most miserable I ever felt after we got back because I'm pretty sure we did like 10 miles or 12 miles on that ruck because we were gone for three and a half hours and i think the route had you guys at like eight ish eight or eight or nine if i remember right yeah so i think we probably the way it felt was around 10 because yeah i'm sure hit. so it was it was awful i mean i remember texting greg and i was like hey we're headed to this road thinking that you know he'd grab us and then all of a sudden <laughs> i see the u-haul just fly by like <laughs> shit so i was like guess we're making it back on the road and i remember John's feet were hurting him pretty bad um, just because it was just a lot more miles than what we thought. And I remember we had to have two full bladders too. And I dumped my second one out halfway through because I was like, I just need more to get rid of some of this weight because I knew yeah. I had like half a full bladder, half of another bladder. And uh, but the most miserable I ever been was when I got to take that nap in my, my dry clothes, you know, my yeah. clean clothes. And I had like this crappy space blanket, like on the ground. And I had my windbreaker over me. And I, just as I fell asleep, I wake up to the U-Haul horn just on it. And then the lights are flashing and I'm shaking. And I was so mad because I was like, oh, I didn't even get to sleep. And next thing you know, we're doing burpees and jumping around because Greg's, after we changed, of course, into wet, nasty clothes. Yep. And it's cold. It was actually surprisingly cold for being like 50 degrees yeah it got in the August. 50s that night yeah yeah it was into the 50s because i saw other people like in little not even in penguin holes we were cuddling next to each other to stay warm yeah. and so that was pretty rough and that's when we went through one of the hardest coupon rucks ever where after i told kevin i'll never go on the buckeye trail again shredder takes us on the buckeye trail <laughs> with a sandbag and a rock and mm -hmm. we couldn't let it touch the ground. It had to be on our body the whole time. And I remember, like, Ian was next to me and John – well, Ian was kind of behind me and Joe, Joe was in front of me. And Joe was on autopilot. I was holding his rock guiding him because he, he was barely hanging on. <laughs> Joe must be watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> is he watching? It says he is. I don't know if he's still watching. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah, he was uh, – I was a little worried for him because he – he was hanging on as long as he could and he wasn't going to quit either. And yeah. so I was just guiding him through. And uh, I remember telling you, is like, dude, I, my left arm's going numb because this sandbag is just so heavy. So then eventually yep. when other people started like dropping their bags or shredder was checking on them, I'd set the sandbag vertically on top of my feet. So it wasn't technically on the ground. And fair. Yeah. It was fair. That's fair. Yeah. It was an exception to the rules. So, uh, and that's when, you know, Steve, obviously, they dropped him after he tore his bicep, you know, that morning. Yeah, that was the day before. Yeah, that, that was, was, that was the, Saturday, uh, like midday Saturday with the yeah. uh, the log movement. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was something. <laughs> that was hot, too, because that was when Shredder had us do the movement where, so Troy is, if anyone who's watching it knows Troy, Troy's a big dude. And so... Mm -hmm. They had me and Troy on a, a log that's only like three and a half feet long trying to carry this thing. And we both could barely be on it because we're touching each other the whole time with, uh, you know, what is it, pillowcases or something over our heads so we couldn't see. Yep. And that was before Steve tore his bicep moving that big log. Um, yep, that was before, yep. And I'll never forget, he's like, oh, I tore my bicep. And I was like, no, you didn't, dude. Get out of here. And then he showed me his arm, Seriously. and I was like, oh, dude. Yeah, <laughs> the whole bicep head was curled up into his shoulder almost. I yeah. That that was weird. I Yeah, that, that threw me off. I'm, like, looking at him like, um, 
think we need to med drop you. And then he's just like, no, I'm good. I'm like, I don't even know what to say to you right now. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, if you feel like you can continue on. He's like, yeah, I tore my other bicep before. And I told this one before too. So this is, you know, like the third time I've torn a bicep. I'm like, okay. Yeah, he's, he's funny, man. I, I love, you know, I love that, that whole group. Actually, oh, yeah, it was a great group. Was great. great. That group was a lot of fun because, you know, you had people from all over, like Jennifer was in from out of town, Troy, yep. Steve, uh, Ian from, you know, Boston area. So it was a good group of people. Um, and then, you know, obviously there wasn't as many pass fail evolutions at the first one as Florida and then yeah. Colorado, obviously. Um, yeah, I think. Uh... For Cleveland, it was really the Cerberus AMRAP, which we've had in all three. Yeah. Um, so Cerberus AMRAP, the eight-mile movement, and then Sand Doom at the end, I think, was the primary. Yeah. Those, I think, were the three primary. There might have been one AMRAP or something in there, uh, yeah. something else in there. But um, yeah. I, the, that I remember, at least, those are the three, you know, pass-fail aspects. Yeah, there was the Cerberus one, Sand Doom. Yeah. Yep. I thought there was – we didn't do Gods of Chaos at Cleveland, did we? Nope, that was Sarasota. That's what I thought. I knew it was in yep. Sarasota because that was yep. the most awful AMRAP ever. I mean, that's I, like the worst AMRAP to come into, like knowing you're at the end of an event and then it's like 30 minutes go, God of Chaos. So and just brutal. <laughs> so what's funny is leading up when I was training for Colorado, like I remember like two weeks out, one of my AMRAPs I did out in the driveway – it wasn't Gods of Chaos, but I had the sandbag over the shoulder. Yeah. And I did a hundred of them total with the 80 pound sandbag instead of 60, just to remember how awful it was. And yeah. it still didn't feel as hard in the driveway as it did down in Florida. <laughs> oh, I'm Florida sure. Was, dude, the humidity. Like, I mean, that was like the worst case scenario at the end there. It was like you had humidity, you were smoked, the sun was beating down, and it was a 30 minute AMRAP on blacktop basically yeah yeah so was, yeah yeah it was uh it was something else um so yeah the amraps in cleveland were hard and it, it was it was definitely different because it was still kind of cold when we were in um mm -hmm. in uh cleveland that morning and then we did that eight miler um you know it's funny how you watch how people do during events because i remember like that trail was kicking our butt you know, some of us, and then, like, I know Jason kept slipping and falling down these stairs that were, like, not even – it was under construction when Shredder took us on there. But when yeah. it came to that eight-miler, he took off, and he was, like, right behind Kevin the whole time. And I was, like, with Tim, France, and um, I think Ian for a while. And then I backed off, and then I linked up with Jennifer, and we both pushed through. and We made it by – I want to say like five minutes or something like it was close. Yeah, it, was close. It, was, it was close, but not too close. No, no, no. It was, uh, it was close, but you know, I'll never forget the relief. And then, you know, at times like, cause obviously a team based and individual, when you start to see people drop, it kind of sucks. Cause like they're your friends, you know, and you're like, yeah. oh, oh man, for sure. you know? So after the eight miler, when I saw that, you know, Troy and John missed it by less than 30 seconds. It was, yeah, like, it was like eight, 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Just no me. way. And Greg, Greg actually. So when that happened, so I, I mean, and you saw this in Colorado, I'm the nice guy. I'm the nice guy. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. that's my, that's my persona. I'm the nice, I mean, I'll smoke you with workouts, but I'm the nice guy. So yeah. that event, Greg told me, he's like, Hey, you know, we have <laughs> three people still out there they have like literally like two minutes left to get here. So I took off sprinting down the trail, <laughs> like hard sprint. I hate running sprinting <laughs> down the trail. I see John and uh, Troy and I say, you guys need to haul ass. You literally have like less than a minute possibly to get back. You better just run the rest of the way just to make sure you make it. Yeah. And then Ian was further down the line and Ian, I had him at the turnaround and I offered him a ride even. I said, listen, you have to do <laughs> I was being honest with him. I was like, you yeah. have to do a 13 minute mile to get back and beat the time hat. And he looked at me and said, there's no way I can do a 13 minute mile right now. And I'm like, that is what you have. You tell me if you want, you can jump in the truck and I'll drive yeah. you back over. 
or you can just go for it and see what happens. He's like, I got to try. So he took off and I was like, all right. So I get in the truck, I go back. So I'm, I get to Greg and then I'm sprinting down and I'm like, all right, told those two, they had to haul ass. I'm like, Ian's a little bit further down the way. I'm going to sprint down there. I start sprinting and I'm like, where the hell is he? And I'm running. <laughs> and finally I say, all right, <laughs> I don't know where he went, but I can't see him. And there's no way he's going to make it at this point. I'm going to go back and make sure the other two are going to make it. So I turn around and I'm running back. I get behind Troy and John and they're walking and I'm like, you need to run yeah. as fast as you can. So I'm like yelling at them and in both Shredder and Greg said, you could hear my voice echoing throughout the whole entire park. Like, I was yeah. like, run! like as loud as possible to them. And yeah. uh, literally we're getting around the corner, <laughs> we're getting around the corner and Troy and John start to slow down again. I'm like, no, you need to run. There's literally 20 yards that direction. You're done. So then they pick it up a little bit and they cross the line and Greg goes 10 seconds. And I was like, and I thought they made it by 10 seconds. So I was like, yeah. you so, I was so mad. And I'm like, yeah, you, yeah. Guys, you guys made me run and I hate running. <laughs> and then he turns around, you guys missed it by 10 seconds. And I just got, and all of a sudden, like my t- stomach turned and I was like, Gah! I was yeah. so upset for him. And I like walked away and I was like, damn it. So yeah, that was, was, a, that was a rough part in that event. Having those two guys so, come so close Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, standards are standards and, you know, we, we, yeah. we can't do anything I mean, about it. But. Yeah. And, you know, I think that time hack was like, it was like five to 10 minutes bigger than what we had in Sarasota. And yeah. I want to say, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was like five to 10 minutes, you know, longer. We had more time in Cleveland than in Sarasota and they're both reasonable I mean, after you look at how fast you had to go, you're like, oh, this is a reasonable pace. You know, you don't you yeah, could make yeah. it without even shuffling if you have a long stride, like a decent yeah. stride. And I mean, so I think the, the difference between those two was Florida's flat. There's like yeah. nothing. The, uh, the trail there is a up and then comes back down some. Mm-hmm. So there is some incline involved in that, that trail you guys were on in, uh, for the towpath there. So there is some incline involved. So I think that was yeah. the gap that we gave you for the incline well, aspect of that. Yeah. And I remember in Cleveland, especially like my legs and hips felt. Over- Whoa. All right. I think we lost him, but he should be able to jump back in here. Uh, hopefully he'll be back in a second here. Uh, but again, you guys, those of you that are watching, um, Sorry, uh, my yeah, you're good. You're good. Out. Um, but no, my hips and everything felt fine, but it was my lower back. It was like in knots after that AMRAP where, I hit a point when I linked up with Jennifer, I caught up to her. I was like, I can only go so fast. Like, I hope I I went fast enough for the first half, but right now it's just kind of like, I'm going to go as fast as I can. And it's just kind of like a long, a long strided walk. And I hope it's good enough. And that's kind of where you hit, you know, that's why they're, they're doable, but they're hard pass fails. So it definitely gets you to really push. I mean, everyone was hurting at our, 30 whatever you know so oh, yeah um you know that cleveland event was a lot of fun it was cool to be a part of the very first one you know yeah. like where there was no no one knew anything about it um you know i got the red one which yep. uh it's one of my favorite patches i mean i will say like cerberus one crushed my htl like my htl was hard it was a shredder htl so you know it was a good yep. one and Cerberus Cleveland just destroyed it where I was like, yeah. it's not even, not even close. You know, I mean, yeah, in an HTL, you might get a little bit more mileage, but it's not as concentrated as far as like in the, on the individual, the pace isn't the same, you know, it's more of a team based thing. So there's no pass fails. Um, yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing, and this goes for throwdowns and these events, I mean, you're, you're, you bring a sandbag, you carry a sandbag. It's, it's <laughs> not, there, there's no, <laughs> <laughs> There's no, hey, I have a sandbag, you have a sandbag, can you carry my sandbag with your sandbag, um, yeah. you know, in these events? So there, there's no getting out of it. Um, no. I mean, you just going to the throwdown event, you guys had like a six-mile coupon carry, basically. Um, like I, and I, 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 you guys yeah. were getting destroyed on that one, which, you know, Dude. worked out because, I, you know, my wife, Krista, came by, and uh, I was like, oh, perfect. Let's pile the sandbags into the back of the truck. You guys are hurting pretty bad. Um, you know, yeah. we'll make a movement without the sandbags. 
but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> you're carrying the sandbag the whole time. There's, there's no getting out of it. You know? Yeah. I can't wait to touch base on the throwdown after I cover Sarasota. Cause I'm going like order, yeah. I guess. And uh, you know, Sarasota, because the terrain was completely flat for the most part. So it seemed like it was definitely more PT than Cleveland. I know Cleveland, we didn't have a five mile run. We had a five mile run in yep. Sarasota, which, um, you know, that's what you get. You got to like gauge these events and how to game it, you know, when, you know, when to push and when to like, Hey, this is like not active recovery, but this is just like surviving till the next thing. And, yeah. For me, the five mile run was kind of like that. Cause I had no, I was running a ton before Cerberus one. Like I would yeah. run one, eight or 10 miler a week on top of a bunch of five milers to get my cardio up. And then Sarasota was kind of like, I jumped in like two or three weeks out. I decided to sign up. I wasn't really prepping specifically for it. I was just in the weight room and then I would do cardio here and there. And so somehow my training from Cerberus one, like there was some residual that carried over because I was in the worst shape out of the three Cerberus events. I was in my worst shape going into Sarasota cardio. Really? Okay. I was, just, I was just stronger at Sarasota than in Cleveland. I was a lot more stronger in the weight room and I, I had a lot more recovery cause I wasn't pushing the mileage as much, but yeah. um, you know, Sarasota, like there was so much more PT compared to Cleveland. Um, and, you know, I think that's, it was somewhat by design because you just wanted to make it harder, but then also you didn't have the terrain to really break us down because yeah. it was so flat. So that that was part of the game plan, other than Mount Sarasota. That was like the only <laughs> only thing we had there was Mount Sarasota to basically, you know, play you know, with you guys. Some inclines. So I remember going through the HDT workouts at the gym. Those were hard. Um, I I want to say I forget the name of it. It might have just been doing man makers. It was like the sandbag. Were you like the yep. push up, bring the arm up? So we yep. were doing those. Those are the sandbag like, man makers. Yep. That was the soul crusher. I remember at the beginning of Sarasota that absolutely wrecked us. It killed yep. me because like I was just I don't know what it, if it was what, something I ate or what, but I just felt terrible at the beginning of that event. And then as it went on, you know, it got a little better. Um, there was one of the most monotonous things ever was the conveyor belt in that gravel <laughs> like crushed up seashells trail. Yeah, and, and that back trail, yeah. Because before that, we did a shredder movement with, like, the tires and then the pallet and the sandbags, and our team did great. It showed that, like, the team – it wasn't the apparatus, it was the team, because then they he had us go to the other one where they were struggling, and we still crushed it, you know, the yeah. three of us. It was, like, France, Thomas, and myself, and I want to say Mike might have been – even been on my team, Egan, um, yeah, for Egan. that part. Yeah, and – so we did that, then that conveyor and our Tim was in our group and I got worried because he started cramping in his stomach real bad and he started to get sick. And yeah, so we kind of, that was a little scary. He ended up rallying through it. And then, um, you know, we did a litter carry and Greg took over for a couple miles doing some stuff. And then I think that's when we ended up at the beach for the five mile run. And then the second round of HDT workouts, which... Yeah, I had you guys from, like, 10 a.m. to, like, 10 p.m. on the beach. Like, we didn't Dude. leave the beach for, like, 12 hours. That, that was a long... That's the longest beach day I have ever had in my life. Yeah, I've never... Cresta in Florida and stuff. Like, that was, like... I got fried. I'm yeah, white. I, I am very white. <laughs> I remember we were near, like, bushes and stuff near this, like, hotel or, like, condo or something doing some of the workouts just to keep us out of the sunlight. And then you cooled us off with some surf PT. And then I think we did two, no, we did two of the workouts in the shade, like in the grass area. Then we did two on the sand, which I remember the worst was the 25 Carl Epps. Yeah. It was yeah. only 25, which Colorado was 50 and you know, <laughs> no Colorado was 25, but we had 50 get ups. Oh, for, that's for it at the beginning of that workout. Yeah, so so it's still the same number of Carl Fredericksons. It was just we we um, added some extra get ups in Colorado. But I remember that workout in particular that because normally you have an hour to finish, and then you know if you don't finish, you get a DNF on that movement, you get no points. But I remember the one on the beach. You're like, no, you guys have to finish it in its entirety. It took me like an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah, so. 
sandbag hold overhead 25 times, 30 yep. seconds a pop. So that one, we were moving pretty good. Like the pace of the event was good. And we were actually a little ahead of schedule. Uh -huh. So I was just like, I'll just have you guys finish the whole workout out. Because I, I could tell <laughs> there's some people that were sitting there going like, oh, it's going to be done soon. I'm just going to sort of <laughs> work my way until it ends. I'm, there's no way I'm going to finish it. And then I was like, everybody's going to finish now. Um, so I, I know Tim, Tim actually was happy about that because he, <laughs> up to that point, he had finished all the workouts and he wanted to complete the workout every rep type thing. So he actually was like appreciative over the fact that he got to finish the workout. Um, yeah. You know, in his mind, he's probably cussing me out and stuff. Not really. Tim, I don't even know if Tim cusses, to be honest. Um, he's such a nice no, guy. Tim. Yeah, I've never heard him swear. Yeah, so, uh, but I'm sure in his head he was saying, man, I really don't want to continue with this. But at the same time, I do want to continue with this, um, you know, to get it done. Uh, but yeah, yeah that, that was the reason. We had some time at that time because you guys actually were moving pretty good. Um, and we were a little bit ahead of schedule based on the yeah. timeline of things. So I was like, hey, we got some extra time. We had like 30 minutes or something remaining, yeah. um, you know, before I had to move you guys into the shade and, you know, start getting ready for the next stuff. Um, which was your favorite part, if I recall right, the crucible carry. Yes, which before we go into that, I want to say, is Jack watching by any chance? Uh, let me see if he's on here. I just want him to hate me for a second because when we were doing the lower workout. He's not, he's not on right now, so feel free to say whatever you want. You okay, may watch so, him later, though. <laughs> so we're at the beach. I remember we had to do 64, like, it was like 32 each shoulder of uh, lunges. You know, you do a yep. lunge with each leg with the sandbag on one shoulder. I remember watching Jack and Jack was doing awesome. And he did 64 per leg and I just let him do the extra work. And I didn't tell him <laughs> he was doing too much. I was like, I was like, maybe this will wear him down a little bit and yeah. you know, it'll give yeah. somebody else a chance to catch up, but it didn't do anything, you know? Yeah. No, and that, that, you know, it, I'm not going to stop anybody from doing the extra work. Like I'll let yeah. you guys do what you want to do as far as that goes. If you're not doing enough work, that's where I come in and say, yeah. Hey, you need to fix this. <laughs> and you're, you're starting at zero for something else possibly. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah. that happened to Crutcher in, in uh, Colorado, actually. He, uh, the core workout, he actually did 25 get ups, And then I was like, dude, you finished those four counts. How were you counting them? And, you know, it basically was like one, two, done, one, two. I was like, oh, so you did 50% of the work. So you need to go back, do that other 50. And your get ups now are at zero. So you have yeah. zero get ups after finishing 25. Um, yeah. Which he, he crushed the workout still. And he, he said that was probably it, where he yeah. actually started to feel a little sick, actually, um, was because he pushed so hard to finish that workout. And, and I think he still came in first place, actually, for time on that. Um, he did. It was like him, Liz, and then I think yeah, uh, Curtis, which is insane. You know? Which is insane. So I mean, he he yeah. pushed himself pretty hard there to the point where I, that possibly led down the path of where he went. Um, you know, with I the mean, stomach that, issues and stuff. That core workout, man. I mean, it was like I uh, I remember I had like thirteen get ups. To Carl F left still when it hit the timer because like yeah. it was just such a grind. Like oh, yeah. you know. Definitely. And it, that, that one was a, uh, uh, that was a, uh, a gift to say the least. Um, that was, you know, probably one of the hardest, most tedious workouts I've programmed <laughs> into an event or even like in an HDT round. Um, yeah. 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 That was really rough. Bad. I mean, I still think like the, the one that hurt the most was the, gods of chaos in florida that still was the worst amrap i've ever had to go through personally because well, it yeah. hurts so it's, bad it's um, a 200 rep round of movements yeah. so, he had yeah, 30 it's... minutes to do it and so you know on any of those like amraps you're like because you have to keep moving after you hit your total mm -hmm. so it's like you want to get done you want to keep constant movement without burning yourself out but you want to finish in time too so i remember yep. I hit the first, I finished the round and it was, there was still like 10 minutes left. I was like, Oh no. Cause then you had to do, is it, was it cleans or overhead presses before you do the setups? Uh, or was it for that one? I think it was uh dead hang cleans and then you go into, no, it was sit-ups. Then it was overhead presses and yeah, then -ups. over the shoulders. Yep. And then the over the shoulders was the last movement. Yep. Yeah. So I remember, uh, that was awful, but, the AMRAPs, 
so after we did the beach and then the crucible carry, which was like the lowest point of the event for me, because I just, with the ruck straps, I didn't have, the, I just could not hold it. It was just. Well, and, so I'll tell you what happened there. That one, you, you got in there and you're trying to figure out how to tie your knots or something. And uh, you were taking too long. So finally I said, tie a knot and just move. And you didn't actually measure out the length of the ropes. So yeah. when you did that, you had two buckets that were like this, one of them dragging almost on the ground, the other up high about midway. And it was, you were all over the place trying to walk with that yeah. thing. That um, was the most frustrating that was thing. <laughs> that, was, that was rough. And then, you know, I was so relieved because I think – I can't remember if we did – the exercise with shredder we're in the water had our rucks buried we might have did that before the crucible carry which yeah that, that was actually, a rotation so it, people did it before or after one of the two so that actually felt like a break i was so relieved to just push my head in the wet sand and just like gradually because low crawling isn't that bad for me so i was like kind of enjoying it like a nice little break i was like oh finally i don't have my ruck on my back and i'm just <laughs> crawling through the sand and mike Tim and I, we just had our heads buried in the sand, you know, like, cause we're like, we're not going to start over. We'll just keep our heads buried. And then, then we went to the hill. Um, and then it was the quarter mile death wasn't a pass fail at, at that point, but it was still oh. like, which that's where, um, yeah, that was at the 24 hour mark actually. Cause we did a shuttle run. And that was when we had the scare with France when like she was crushing everything. And then the shuttle yeah. run, for some reason, it was just hard for her at the time. Well, she, I think it was just, she never really practiced a shuttle run. So she didn't know how to pivot to pick yeah. up because you guys had to pick up glow sticks. The, yeah. The, people uh, were dropping them and fumbling yeah, them and for a second. You guys were fumble on them. And I was like, man, someone strong is going to end up out of this because they yeah. dropped the glow stick, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, that that she just wasn't used to the movement and pivoting to turn around. So she she would run to the point, basically stop for a second, grab it, and then turn around and go, rather than mm -hmm. sort of one smooth movement. You know, yeah. get there, sort of you know, drop down while you're pivoting, grab it, and turn and burn. Um, and I think it was Jason uh, who actually pulled her aside and said, "Listen, this is what you need to do, and this is the yeah. adjustments you need to make." And you know, this is how you should do this to get, you know, the best time that you can get. Um, yeah. And then when it all came down to it, she, she crushed it. She, she beat it by about three seconds um, yeah. once she figured that was, part out. So It was scary, though. You could see it on her face. Like, oh, it, she was terrified. No time, you know? She was terrified. She was terrified from the moment we did the practice runs. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it, you could tell it was lingering in her mind the whole entire event, actually. Yeah. Um, and, and you could tell right after the practice runs, her whole demeanor changed. Yeah, she totally changed the way she was like just carrying herself everything she totally changed that demeanor knowing that that was going to for sure be coming up at some point sort of like yeah. the rope climb with the weight and everything you know it's coming you know we had people in Colorado that even said they didn't think they would actually be able to do it and they weren't able to do it fresh but they still yeah. showed up and you know hope that they would be able to do it magically that you know evening yeah. or yeah. afternoon um and that, that was her rope climb, essentially, was that, that yeah. moment. Um, yeah, her face, just like, she, she looked terrified. Um, well, but she passed, I, she passed it, so. Yeah, and I remember, like, because that was after, because we had the four-mile, like, uh, nav ruck, which that was pretty easy. Like, everyone finished that pretty quick, and then we got a break. Took a nap, like a 20-minute nap on the concrete, whatever, because there was too many bugs in the grass, so I laid on the concrete, and uh, – I remember after that, I was so stiff. I was like, man, I don't know how my body's, it's going to loosen up. And it loosened up at the shuttle run. I chugged a five hour energy. I was like, all right, it's pass fail. It's go time. Like game face on. So then we did the hill with the quarter mile death, which, uh, yeah. you know, it was dirty, but it wasn't too bad. And then we had the, it was sandbag bear crawl, sandbag drag bear crawls up the hill, then tosses down. Yep. And if you had the form right, you could toss it. And it would roll like 10, 12 feet, you know, yeah. so. But uh, that just means you're down there quicker to come back up with a bear crawl. I know, I know. I didn't <laughs> think about that. Uh, but we did, that was fun. And the AMRAP is when we lost Tim on the first one, which might yep. have been the Cerberus one with the get-ups because, you know, it his was. abs and stuff were still hurting him pretty bad. And then uh, then Jason on the next one, which is the, the half of Sand Doom one. Yep. And uh, I remember Jason, yeah. 
Yeah, and I heard Jason say like something about the hotel. I was like, yeah, dude, we'll worry about it. He was like, well, no, I'm done. And I was like, what do you mean you're done? I was like, he's like, yeah, I couldn't do it. I was like, no, man, because yeah, because yeah, that still- was the that was the overhead press, and I said specifically you had to palm the sandbag when you did it. So you couldn't so, use the strap. You had to palm it, balance it, and press it. And he his bag was so floppy that every time he tried to get his hands underneath it, it would fall down. Um, so, like, I remember a couple of them, I would clean it, and then I would just press, like, as fast as I could. Even if it started to roll, I was like, I just I know I can get five get it before it falls out of my hands. And then uh, then we went through that. And then after that was when we went back to the gym, and that's when we had the eight-miler, which – I remember this is where some craziness happened in the event. I was, as we all remember, obviously, like I remember Greg saying, you're going to follow this path. And I remember I was like, so we're on this, the paved path, right? He's like, yes. I was like, okay. So it was at like mile two and a half, maybe I forget three where you hit an intersection and the sidewalk goes completely straight with the path you're on. And then you look at the path veered to the left. And so I veered left and, I took off, Jack was way ahead of me, and I took off real fast at the beginning, and I didn't see anybody for a while, and then after I hit that point, I hit the turnaround, I was like, man, I still don't see him, I think they got lost, or, you know, maybe something happened, and we're also carrying the rifles, too, Um, and for a second, because I know France had her rifle hanging from straps on her ruck, I thought maybe Greg saw her doing that, was like, hey, you're done, because you're not carrying it, you know? in okay. your hands so i didn't know what to expect and i didn't see him and then when we were coming back ian caught up with me jack was still far ahead and i remember i saw greg in the distance and he just started yelling i was like all right i'm just gonna run so i ran like the last quarter mile made it by 30 seconds and ian was like five seconds behind me you know yeah yep. yeah it was close and, and i went fast too that's why it was crazy because i was like you know they got lost, but unless they would have really started to catch up, I mean, they, you know, even if they were a half mile behind or a quarter mile yeah. behind, it would have been too big of a gap, yeah. but nobody knew what the time was. So, yeah. you know, you don't, and I want to say it was still a good time, you know, doable time, but you know, the rifle is not really an issue. It's just like nine pounds and you just, when you're just rucking, it's not a big deal on something yeah. flat. Now in the mountains, it's a bit of a pain, but, uh, I was familiar with doing them in the using it in the mountains, so I was like, whatever, it's just switch hands. It's just more of an annoyance than anything. Yeah. Uh, and then that's when we had the puzzles, which I thought maybe that was kind of improvised because I thought you guys didn't expect there only to be three people at that point. So, like, I didn't know if maybe there was other things planned or if that was part of it. Oh, no, no, no. That, that was a mental challenge type thing for you guys and, and a little bit of downtime. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was 100% planned. Um, yeah. We didn't magically just have puzzles on us. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wasn't it was like, funny. hey, I'm going to bring my puzzle in case, you know, I have some downtime. I'm going to work on my yeah. puzzle, you know, while you guys go thrash the other guys. I'll just play with my puzzle. No, that was, and, uh, that was a mental type of thing to see it really where your cognitive skills were. It really was hard, too, surprisingly, because you're just yeah. so tired. And then we went into the, the rope climb. Then I think the AMRAP, because um, – yeah, the rope climb wasn't bad. It was no yep. weight on your back. We both, all three just went right up and down, no problem. Um, yep. So that was Sarasota. Um, you know, to this point, still the hardest event I've completed. Um, yeah, I'll touch base on the throwdown because that was like that six mile coupon ruck, man. Kevin wasn't even ready for it. You know, oh, he, just he, like, he didn't expect it. He didn't expect yeah. it. He expected it to be you know, heavy drop, like, yeah. you know, just do some heavy drop workouts and some small short movements and stuff. Um, yeah. you know, a- any throwdown is going to be anywhere from like eight to like, I think we had the most was 15 miles, um, wow. in an event. So yeah, I mean, you never know what you're going to yeah. get, but yeah, Kevin had no clue, no expectation of that. Yeah. Whatsoever. I just know during that, um, you know, Ian, uh, Ashkar, one of my buddies here, he was like dead set on beating me at the throwdown. And I was like, well, Ian, you knew you weren't going to be able to finish the whole thing. So you could go balls to the wall for the first eight hours and then leave. <laughs> I was like, I still had another eight hours left. 
And I think I told him, I said, hey, man, you're in second place right now behind Kevin. And yeah. he goes, he goes, that's a, that's a good consolation prize right now, knowing I'm beating Don right now yeah, as yeah. he walked out. <laughs> yeah, because he wanted he thought he was going to beat me in a workout when he came over to help me work on my house. And I beat him. So he was like dead set on beating me at the throwdown. And uh, the throwdown was fun. It was like a, it's just completely different than Cerberus. You know, it's just a totally oh, yeah. different thing. Um, it's definitely more fast paced because it's a shorter window of time. And, uh, you know, it's mainly just the heavy drop with some other stuff mixed in. It was a lot of fun though. I, I was really happy to get second and get some good works gear, which was awesome. And see yep. Tim was in town for it, which was cool. And it's just crazy how in these events things can change. Cause like Mike was doing great and then he had his asthma issues, you know, his, or yeah, allergy yeah. issues. And yeah, his allergy. I mean, if you look at his uh, picture, I think it was a picture or a video, the video that I did, you know, of the uh, uh, interviews while you guys did the laps around that, the school there. Mm-hmm. If you look at his face and then you look at like beforehand, it, the first interview, <laughs> his face is like blown up. Like his, his yeah. eyes are like almost like baggy and like look like they're going to close shut. Um, he, you could just tell he was miserable. Um, yeah. And it, it was getting to a point where, you know, you could tell that when he exerted himself, he was having trouble breathing. Um, yeah. And, you know, there, he, he's done, he did a throwdown in Knoxville before that, you know, yeah. he came in, I think second place in that one. Like, yeah. you know, there wasn't a point where I was going to be like, Hey, you know, this is not worth it basically for him to, you know, continue yeah. on. Um, yeah. Like, Hey, listen, I'll, I'll med drop you right now because you literally physically right now, you're having issues that are basically affecting yeah. your health. Um, yeah. Cause he was doing great. I mean, yeah. he was, I was, when we did the rock and the run at that school, I was like, all right, I want, this is my, I saw Mike was behind me. I was like, all right, sweet. I'm going to push it on these two and try to finish second behind Kevin. And then I ended up finding out that Mike had his, you know, he couldn't breathe and stuff. I was like, well, that makes sense because he was doing so good. Yeah, yeah. And then you see the, and then you see the walls division people as Steel City <laughs> calls it, just having fun the whole time. And you're just like, gosh, I could just dump this sandbag out and have fun too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, it, it's almost a mental game having them right next to you in all honesty. Yeah. You know, knowing that they're sitting there just like, hey, I got a 10-pound sandbag or a 20-pound sandbag and a 10-pound ruck and just sort of like having fun, chit-chatting and joking around. Yeah. And you're over there just getting crushed by the weight and just throwing it around. And you're like, man, oh, this yeah. sucks, you know. Um, yeah, doing the burpee. A 16th of a mile burpee sandbag tosses with ruck on was just absolutely awful. And then, then doing it without the ruck on and then the bear crawl – and then the sprint, obviously, because, you know, gosh, those were terrible, man. I just – that was hard. I mean, I was surprised how hard the throwdown was. Um, it's Not it's saying a it ch- wasn't going to be difficult, but it, I thought it was going to be more just heavy drop stuff like Kevin thought, you know? Yeah. No, throwdowns are hard if you're in competitive. Competitive, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a 12 to 16 hour just butt kicking. Um, I know I said next time I'll do the laws division because then yeah. I'll have fun, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, that's totally fine. I wouldn't, I, you know, you, like I said, when you said you wanted to do competitive, I was like, I wouldn't put it past you if you wanted to do the non-competitive because <laughs> you already punched your ticket to the ultimate throwdown. So there, there's no, yeah. you know, I mean, in a sense, you cut one more participant out of the throwdown that you have to compete yeah. against if you, if you sign up for it. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, <laughs> As far as tiers of, of our events go, it's like here's where Cerberus is. Down here is probably a throwdown as a competitive. And then it's like down here is like, you know, Lowell's <laughs> division and like knockout. Shoebots <laughs> would even probably be harder than a uh, Lowell's division in all honesty. Um, oh, for if sure. No full weight and stuff for the two hours. Um, so, yeah, yeah. The, the, the throwdown's legit. It's uh, especially if you're doing, you know, again, the uh, competitive division. Yeah, and I would urge anyone to do the the throwdown. Just even Lulls division, whatever, or now the – what's the – Knockout. Count, the knockout. Yeah, so yeah. Knockout, knockout division – I mean, knockout, just knockout event. Um, you show up, basically, it's somewhere between the – I mean, like 4 a.m. and like 7 a.m. range. It, it just yeah. depends on how I schedule things out. But you show up for basically a workout set, 
and then there's a movement, some AMRAPs, um, and basically you finish it out with the rest of the group um, yeah. in a shorter three to five hour range though. Um, yeah, so and again, that one, I don't even check weights. Like you guys show up and whatever you want, you can bring, yeah. you know, an empty ruck and an empty sandbag for all I care. Cause I'm not going to sit there and weigh everybody's stuff while we're trying to go through it. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's I think that'd be fun. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then, you know, obviously I did that in June and then Cerberus Colorado, you know, happened, uh, just, you know, two weeks ago now. And, uh, yep. you know, I was like, I underestimated, I don't want to say like altitude, but it might've had a factor, but I know I was, I felt my, I had the best mix of strength and cardio versus the other two Cerberus is going into Colorado and, um, you know, Colorado, I was really wanting to get that third one. Cause I remember in Florida, we're at dinner, Greg and Jason, they're like, you have to go for the third one, man. Like you and Ian are the only guys that finished the previous two. Like you got to go for the third one. And I was like, yeah, but I kind of don't want to go because <laughs> it was, because I was just finished Sarasota. I was like, this is like the hardest thing I've ever done. I don't know if I want to do Colorado. And then uh, I thought about it. I signed up like, I don't know, a week after Sarasota or something, signed up for Colorado because of the discount, finished your discount. And then there was another one that I think I stacked them together. So it was a good deal. And then uh, Colorado is, um, had a real different start than the other two, obviously, with the hands on the hips and doing 100, I don't even know. It felt like 100 burpees before we even had to do our five-minute, you know, PT test burpees, which in Sarasota, we didn't do uh, burpees for the PT test. We just did the prisoner squats. Yep. So that was a little different. Um, well, I think that was, that was where you guys got to see the good cop, bad cop come out. Yeah. I think that, yeah. that was the initial like, Hey, this is yeah. you, when you're with me, I'll give you guys a little bit of slack just enough. So you forget yeah. about it. And then Greg rolls in and there you guys are hands on the hips and you know, all that stuff. I know I told Kyle, I was like, Kyle, just because you can do 100 burpees doesn't mean that we can all do them. So quit putting your hands on your hips, dude. Well, and you, guys, you guys had 40 burpees, and then literally that was the time between, I think it was uh, sit-ups and yeah. going into burpees. So that middle time where you had a little bit of a break turned into 40 burpees before going into five minutes of burpees. So, yeah, yeah that, was, that was a rough start for you guys. Yeah, it was – it was definitely rough. And I was like, oh, well, here's my measurable burpee number because I just did 40 right before. You know, I was already yeah. dying. And then, uh, you know, it was definitely different. Um, but it was good. It was good that, that it was different. You know, I mean, you got to make them – you got to up it a little bit each time so you can figure out the, the best thing. And that was good because I remember Greg and I are good friends and – I, it was an hour before the event started. And I was like, Hey, I just want to talk to you before say hi, before you flip the switch. And he's like, it's flipped F off. And you know, he didn't yeah. even look up his phone. He just pointed and told me to get away. So I was like, yeah. okay. Like, you know, and, uh, so that had a, the core was the soul crusher of that beginning of the event. Um, yeah. we didn't do the, the SAQ is it SAQ. Is that what you call it? The, we didn't do that because we yep. did all those burpees. Speed agility quick. You guys did enough burpees and everything else. Your heart rates were already oh, up. It was, I was like looking at it. I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to bother with it because you guys yeah. are already warmed up and good to go. Yeah, which I felt good. Like, you know, the burpees were awful. But like through the PT test, I felt okay. My numbers weren't what I had hoped. There were a little bit less reps by like, you know, a handful than what I normally would do here. Um, then we did the pull-ups and then went into the burpees and everything. And then the workouts – and, you know, the workouts were, they were definitely hard. Um, the core one was the worst one. And that just like killed my midsection. Um, and I did train abs and did more heavy sandbag sit-ups and everything and training leading up to this. Cause I know it's always one of my weak points. Um, yeah. And we went through and then you switched out and then Greg took us and we had to put all of our kit in our rucks and, I thought we were going to get penalized because Troy had his shovel out and, and Greg's like, is this the first time you're messing with that at the event? And Troy's yeah, like, yeah. I and I was like, I was like, Oh, please don't let him punish us. Like, 
<laughs> because none of it, there's still tags on our gear because we just bought it and brought it, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, um, well, actually, before that, we did the AMRAP with the snorkel, which was interesting. Um, I felt bad for the people yep. with goggles because their nose was stuck. I was able to still breathe through my nose and out through the snorkel. So yep. breathing wasn't as bad. It was a little restricted, but it was more of a pain just – hitting it getting it from you know overhead onto your back um, yeah so that was kind of cool and then I, it was funny how liz like pr saying you know at the end of the event at the end of the event yeah yeah like a pr yeah, the average all those hours. yeah the average for you guys as a team basically was about 5.45 i think or something like that full yeah. rounds so about five and a half rounds um so you know that's five plus 20 ish or so yeah. Um, but yeah, the, uh, and that, and that's what I based the final AMRAP on. I said, Hey, you got to meet the average of what everybody else did 38 hours ago. You know, you've been yeah. through 38 hours of, you know, workouts and everything else. So now you got to do yeah. it, you know, without a snorkel in your mouth. We didn't make her put the snorkel. In, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was, she crushed it. I mean, she almost hit 10 rounds. Um, yeah, that, that was once. wild. And, you know, I was, uh, I was pulling for a lot. I was nervous on the shuttle run, believe it or not. Cause I was like, if she just trips, it's like, that's three seconds right there. And, you know, yeah, what she did, she actually tripped on that first initial movement. And that's when I was like, Oh yep. no, if this is what, if this is what takes her out because she just accidentally catches a toe yep. and trips, you know, on something that we all kind of take is probably would be the easiest of the, you know, pass fails in my mind. Yep. Uh, Cause there's not a lot more, there's not a lot to it. You're just sprinting, yeah. you know, run, it's not run, like run, climbing run. a rope. Yeah. Just run. And so I know that we did the shuttle run. Did we do the shuttle and then break took over where we took the rowers and went down the road and I'm trying to think. Yeah. Yes. We did the shuttle run, yeah. then the kit. And then, um, you know, we had more burpees in there somebody did something i come out of the bathroom and they're like oh 40 burpees for you i was like i didn't even do anything wrong and I, yeah thank you God were I gone though we were doing stuff and you left to go to the bathroom and i was like where the heck is don at i know i, I was like all right well he's doing double burpees since he disappeared on us <laughs> yeah yeah it was uh it was awful and then well we did that movement with the rowers like Carrying the rowers wasn't bad. They're awkward, but they aren't really that heavy. You could almost have yep. one person just carry it by themselves. Yep. So we flew down, you know, it was like one and a half miles or something. And then that's when the wheels came off for me, like with cramping and stuff. It was like my abs started cramping on one side, then my forearms, and then my hamstrings. And I'm just like, man, what's going on? Like I was drinking electrolytes. I stayed on top of my water. And Greg was like, the roller kind of helped loosen up to some degree the first couple times I pushed through it. And then after that, it just started, it was just not up the whole time. And I was pulling with my arms as hard as I can yeah. to try and like leaning back kind of awkward to just try to stretch my stomach out. And then we had to do plank position when you're waiting to row, which was terrible. <laughs> and then we carried him back. And then that's when uh, I was like, I had enough <laughs> when we were doing the, holding the 10 pound plate overhead. And um, I don't know what it was. I mean, I guess, cause I was cramp looking back now, I was cramping early on in Florida and Cleveland too. Yeah. It just wasn't in my abs, it was other spots. And I've known yeah. the abs are like the ones that hurt the most out of any of them. And I was like, we're still early. We're not getting a break anytime soon. I don't know that this, I'm going to be able to catch up on the hydration. Like I just, there's nothing that I'll be able to do to fix this. Yeah. And so I just said, you know what? I, I thought, could I, because there is no pass fails. Could I slog through to the 24 hour mark, tough it out, finish last and stuff. If I start cramping up real bad and just be miserable, or can I just say, you know what, today's not my day. I don't know what's going on with my body, but I, you know, and I talked to Greg after and he's like, dude, it's all mental with you down in Colorado, out in Colorado. I was like, yeah, it was. I mean, yeah. it's easy when you're hurting to just say, you know it's, what, it's, it's a valid excuse in your mind. That's all it is. It all is, you yeah. need is a valid excuse. And that's why I even said it to even, not not to 
try to get you guys to quit, but I was just like, listen, every single one of you here, except for like Mike and Curtis has an excuse. You can say that elevation just made it hard for me. And that's why <laughs> like you can use yeah. that as an excuse and yeah. people will look at it and say, yeah, elevation sucks. So I can understand yeah. that. Um, I mean, I, I think it's a factor, but it's not, it's not that big of a factor. It shouldn't know? be a factor that's going to make you quit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and I, th I think throughout the event, like we saw, you know, there was definitely a little more fatigue in people and stuff, but it, it shouldn't have turned into a factor that made people quit. Um, no, I feel and I don't think it played a role in anybody quitting, even if they want to say that that's the reason they, they can say it, but I don't think uh, there was ever a moment where I'd look at it and say like, yeah, they quit because of the elevation and they just couldn't push. Um, no, the, it was just, you know, I look at it like, okay, some of these, when I would chip away at my, at the workouts, I'd break it out into like, you know, sets and I'm like, okay, so what would normally I could do eight to 10 reps on this movement. I might only yeah. get five to seven before I need to take a pause because yeah. of the difference, but it wasn't a huge where it's like, Oh, I'm choking. I can't breathe difference. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was, we're only at 5,000, 6,000 feet. So yeah. It, it definitely played a factor, but it, I'd say the heat in Florida in February was more of a factor, you know, coming from Ohio than going from Ohio to Colorado with the elevation. So yeah, yeah I'd agree. So yeah, I mean, it didn't go how I wanted, but you know, still made the most of it. Got to hang out and you know see the par other participants keep going, and yeah, that was exactly. awesome. You know, it's it's a bummer, but you know, you can't. You know, stuff happens. I mean saw it with like Mike at a throwdown, you know, you think, Oh, this is just a 16 hour event. Like I should be able to make it through it. And then, you know, he had medical issues happen. So, you know, I still technically need to go for a third one, you know, cause. Uh oh, are we going to get an announcement out of you on this one? I don't know, man. I don't... <laughs> it's still far out. Breaking I... news. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I have some time to figure you do, to you do. decide. Especially because... with the way you've done the other events. I wouldn't expect you to sign up until like three, four weeks before the event happens. Yeah. It's because, so. you know, it's not even like, um, you know, other people have done big events. They're like signing up doesn't motivate you to do the event. You already been training before you signed up. Signing up just finalizes it. So yeah. I was like, you know, because you have a finisher, I have a finisher discount. I was like, even if I sign up late, I still get a discount on it. So that's, that's a nice thing about finishing one is you get the discount, you know, yeah, yeah. so yep. it's a big one. And, uh, it's pretty, you know, it's a lot of fun. These events are a lot of fun. Um, I'd say if you've done a, for anyone out there that's thinking about doing service, if you've done a go rock heavy, you're definitely, I think you're physically, if you've done a heavy and you felt strong throughout, you're capable of physically finishing Cerberus if you just up it a little bit. It's just, you know, that extra hours, I mean, you know, you get your money's worth because the pass fail or after 24 hour mark. So if, let's yeah. say it's not your day, you still have a, a long event, you know, and yeah. I think a lot more people could do it. Um, I'd like to see a lot more people sign up for it. Um, yeah. I mean, we're at, uh, for Charleston right now, we just hit, I think it's 18. So oh, that's 18. probably the most. Uh, Cleveland, we had 23 official signed up. Um, oh, okay. So 23 for Cleveland. We had 13 for Sarasota and 19 for uh, Colorado. So oh, wow. we're, we're inching towards that. We're five away from basically sign up wise. Now show ups, that's a whole different story. Um, <laughs> show ups is about a 50% show up rate. So um, yeah, which is sad. I mean, it's, it, it is what it is. There's some valid reasons. There's some that just go MIA and you don't hear anything from them. But um, yeah, I mean, the uh, you know, I, I think Charleston will probably be a big class. Um, oh again, yeah. We cap it at fifty because it's just you know we we pay too much attention to doing stuff and there's too much, um, you know, going on to make it bigger than that. In all honesty, right now, um, yeah. so I, I don't know if we'll hit fifty which really would be like 25, <laughs> I guess, based on the 50%, wow. you know, no shows. Even if we, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, Charleston's going to be a big one. I feel, um, well, I think yeah, Colorado definitely showed people what kind of event it is, you know? So, um, Oh, for sure. 
but yeah, it's, it's, and it's a, it's a solid group right now. I would say, uh, the 18, um, you know, we got people from Colorado Springs event coming out. Um, there, you know, Jack's coming out for the Cerberus event for that one. Um, so, I mean, it's, yeah, it'll be, uh, Kurt, Ian says, do it, do it, do it. That's Ian, uh, lie. (laughs) He signed up. (laughs) Uh, Curtis oh, is, is Curtis says word is getting out. Curtis is also signed up. Um, Crutcher signed up. We got, you know, it, it, we're getting the game, the group back together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The group Blues back Brothers, together. Uh, action yeah. Games. That's what was funny with Florida. Like five of the eight of us were at Cerberus one. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, I think most of the Colorado people will probably be back. Um, you know, there, there it's, I mean, we got some, I'm not going to start naming people, but there's some names people will recognize that are showing up for this one. Um, yeah, that's good. So, yeah, yeah. yeah good to see. You. Also, uh, Jennifer says hi, Amic. <laughs> and then also, before I forget, Jonathan wants to know, what does maximum effort mean to you? Is that Metzke? Yes. Yes. So, max effort, which Tim Gall- Tim brought it up in – in Cleveland, he's like, I don't see max effort. I was like, dude, sometimes survival is max effort. <laughs> like, yeah. I yeah. mean, I guess max effort to me is, uh, you know, you're, you're pushing yourself to your limit, you know? And yep. at that time, your limit might only be 50% of what you're normally capable of. It's just, that's just how it goes. I mean, you're progressively, you go down. I know that through Cerberus, you would do, in Colorado, did you do a retest at all of some of the PT stuff we did at the beginning? We did not. We did not do a PT test at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wondered if you guys did that at some point after I, you know, was out of it. Um, nope. I so saw yeah, enough. Was, I I knew where everybody was at based on the last <laughs> set of workouts, where the the, the 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 levels, the numbers would have been low. We'll put it that way. It would have been very low. <laughs> You were like, all right, uh, 10 push-ups, got it. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, that, the island workouts, as I call them, because we were on an island while we did it, um, yeah, they, they, were, they, were, they were hurting. So oh, yeah. I don't think uh, if I would have put them through a PT test, it would have been, I don't want to say <laughs> laughable, because it would have been their max effort, but it would have been like, you know, 75% lower <laughs> than their original oh. numbers or 50% lower than their original numbers. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I know. That's why I laughed at what the burpees at the test, the, the 27 I did. I was like, well, if you add that to the 40, that's kind of where I would have been on a five minute, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. You guys basically had like 10 minutes of burpees pretty much. Yeah. 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 And so then uh, real good. quick, Troy, you asked, uh, were we using any uh, Paul Sox readings during the event? We did not. Actually, it would have been cool actually to do that. Um, didn't think about it, but maybe for uh, next time. We're, we got to go back to Colorado Springs because we have 50 patches still. We, we didn't even get to give a patch out, so <laughs> I have a stack of patches. So, oh, uh, man. At some point, we got to go back to Colorado Springs. Yeah, no, I was a bum, a bum that Shredder wasn't able to be there. It was still yeah. a great event, but I, I wish I could have got to see him for a little bit. Yep. Hopefully, so. the, the he's – hoping that he'll be able to make Charleston. I think he will be based on his, the last conversations we had. Um, oh, cool. But uh, yeah, he, he had just some, some medical issues that he couldn't get cleared on uh, for traveling out there. So, uh, um, you know, it, it just didn't work out, but you know, Greg and I, we picked up the slack. We threw our yeah. shredder time in there where we had it. So, um, you know, it, it was stuff that he would have had more or less. Oh uh, yeah you know, planned out and stuff, some teamwork, team building stuff and teamwork based uh, movements and stuff. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, he should be, I, I think we'll see him out in Charleston, um, awesome. which is a huge plus. Uh, also helps to, you know, get a little extra rest in there. You know, <laughs> yeah. Three hours, yeah, four sure. hours naps. And then it's like, Oh, I got to go do stuff now. And then yeah. six hours, seven hours. And then, Oh, I got to go back to sleep real quick. And you don't actually fall asleep really. It's like, you know, no. You just close your eyes, but your mind's still going. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, wide awake. Yep, exactly. Um, so I'm going to just real quick, anybody who has questions, feel free to put them in the comments and uh, I'll read them off as we go. Um, but yeah, so Colorado, 
obviously you said didn't go as planned. Um, yeah. But uh, and you, you got to – was it after you guys got back from the rowers? Was that the – We're actually in the middle of the rowers, which is kind of funny because uh, I was talking to Ian the other day. He's like, he's like, when I quit, any time I've ever quit, it's when there's a break. And I yeah. was like, yeah, I quit right during the middle of a movement. I just, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> well, that's why like, I, I told Ian, I said, listen, man, don't quit when we're going into a break. Take yeah. the break settle yourself down a little bit, reassess. And then if we come back and say, Hey, you're going to do 25 minutes of burpees, which we would never do. But if we're going to say, you're going to do 25 minutes straight of burpees, then yeah, you say, I'm done. I don't want to do yeah. 25 minutes of burpees and walk away. <laughs> but don't quit yeah. during the break. Um, uh, <laughs> we had a couple times, you know, again, nice guy here, you know, where I had people come up to me and say, Hey, I, I'm done. <laughs> you know, that's it. And I'd look at him. I go, no, you're not because we have a small break coming up and you're going to take that time to reassess the situation, figure out if you want to be here or not. And then if you hear the next movement, what we're doing doesn't sound good to you, then you can tell me you want to quit. On the yeah, other hand, Red would have been like, okay, shake my hand and we're calling it a day. See you later. Um, that's what, so, that, that's, that's the good cop, bad cop dynamic there going on. Greg's like, yeah, Brian, if you, if you would have said that to Brian, he would have tried to, he would have, for a second, tried to convince you to stay in it. I would have. Like, I would have. I would have been probably. like, God, you came out from Ohio. Like, you yeah. know, hey, take a minute. Think about this. And then get back Greg's on the road. Like, Greg did ask me twice. He's like, are you sure? And I was like, yes, I'm sure. I shook his hand. And he's like, you know, it's going to be easier, right? You're through the hard part. I was like, no, I'm not, Greg. Don't even. <laughs> like, it's not, through the heat. It's not it, getting it easier. It definitely did not get easier. That no, is for I mean, sure. It's not getting easier at all. It definitely did not get easier. Um, no, that event, it was building up. The whole thing was a build up. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, just, I mean, a Q mod six, that's, you know, for a pass fail. Um, that's two hours of solid work the whole way through if you want to get through five. So, I mean, it, yeah. it's one of those things. If you're going to, if you're going to do this event, the Q mod six, my guess, if we ever get more than, you know, a handful of people that make it to that point, that's going to be sort of the line in the sand uh, for pass fail. Um, I feel like that's going to be where we're going to lose people, you know, up to the point where the rope climb obviously is another spot. But um, yeah. because a Q mod six to finish five out of six in a two hour period at that point in the game, um, you have to be putting full effort out. There's not a moment yeah. where you stop and say, Oh, I'm going to take a break and, you know, wait around a little bit um yeah. you have to put 100 percent of you know the effort out or else you, you know you're gonna come up short like even liz who went non-stop she really didn't stop for anything um she she actually had a rhyme and reason to how she did it she said i take you know one lunch two lunch and then i take two deep breaths one lunch two lunch two deep you know so she had a pattern she was going off yeah of. and uh she only had 17 minutes between the end of the fifth one that she did in the start of the sixth. So there yeah. was, you know, only 17 minutes between a pass fail, um, which is a two hour movement, you know? Yeah. So that I feel, yeah. you know, going down the line here, that's going to be one of those points where, you know, we're, if you really, <laughs> excuse me, if you really want to be there, you're going to have to put in a hundred percent effort, your maximum effort, as you say, right. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, okay. You have to be, you have to be pushing throughout that whole entire two hour period. Um, or you're not going to make, you know, that fifth, that fifth spot. Um, yeah. Cause some of the movements you might get done and, you know, quick, but then there's yeah, one that's yeah. going to take you an hour for the one movement, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, uh, the first movement they had, you know, was a ruck run three minutes, right? Two, three minutes yeah. actually is what we see. Um, the next movement was ruck overhead. So, you know, this is one of those things where for Liz, she was good. She got through that, I think, you know, in about six minutes or so. And then for Mike, he ended up taking about 12 minutes to finish. Um, yeah. You know, so he started to fall behind there and, and it was the shoulders and, and it, you know, everything was pre-programmed. I didn't try to, you know, get Mike to get knocked out, but I could tell once we finished the Cerberus AMRAP with the ruck or the sandbag overhead for a 60 second hold and he was only holding it for, you know, 10 seconds to 30 seconds for some of them, I was already starting to think, oh, that ruck overhead's going to be an issue for that yeah. horse. Um, and it, it, it turned out that, you know, it, it showed in the numbers, um, which sucked. But, 
you know, and then after that, he had sandbag tosses, which again, core little bit of the upper body too. When you do the rotations, you're still holding on to it. Um, yeah. And then the, the ruck lunges, I was like, dude, ruck lunges is where you have to make up the gap basically because your arms yeah. are just there. You're going to have your traps. are going to get smoked from having a ruck on, but you know, this is your opportunity to just get the legs to go and uh, give those shoulders a break. And he knew, cause he did the virtual Q mod six for uh, Pittsburgh, which had um, the inchworms on it. So he knew that his time wasn't going to be, you know, it, he wouldn't be able yeah. to make that. Time. Cause he, he said he took an hour and 20 minutes to do it. Uh, for that Q mod six. And he ended up, I think, finishing like four and a half on that one out of the yeah. six originally in the virtual version. That's fresh. Um, yeah. And he knew, you know, with 57 minutes left in that Q mod that he wouldn't be able to hit that number um, in that amount of time. So, yeah. you know, that, and again, you know, I, I respect him. He, he freaking crushed it. 38 yeah, hours. I mean, of 38. Day. Um, you know, and he just, he knew that there was no way for him to do it. So he, he decided to step out at that point. Um, yeah. And as soon as he did, I was like, all right, take your shoes off, man, kick your feet up on the hill, basically lay there, put your head over your head and, you know, just relax. And he was out cold, uh, yeah. like two minutes into it, he was out. So, uh, um, yeah. so yeah, that QMOT six, you know, that's going to be, I think one of the tougher parts of, uh, the past fails, uh, moving forward with these as well. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, Krista says, hi. Hey. She says beardo buddies. So yeah. <laughs> for sure, man. Yes. Is there any other questions or I know no, um, no other questions coming through yet. Um, so I'll, what we'll do is we'll just say we only got, it looks like maybe two, three people following right now. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you do have questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Uh, we'll give another minute or so. And if not, then yeah. we'll uh, just wrap it up here. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, one thing I will say that was different than the other ones was I was training legs twice a week leading up to this one to get my legs ready because I knew it was going to be, you know, that's it's a rucking. Yeah, it's a rucking event in the incline. I did a lot of stairs. Uh, I still did the incline, but no weight. Ian yeah. threw weight on his back and did it. I was like, no, dude, I'm going to enjoy this. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine doing the incline, you know, at hour, what was it? Probably around hour 28 or something. It was later. around 4 a.m. So whatever 4 a.m. would be. It was, oh, it was no, like that would be close to hour 30 then or something. Yeah, I think I, it yeah, was that's... 30. Um, Yes, 4 a.m. is when they started. 4, 4.30 was when they started uh, yeah, for the which, incline there. So. You know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You start when it's dark, so it's harder to see on those because those are not even by any means. Some of them yeah, you yeah. almost have to get on all fours, but you got to beat all the tourists too because yeah, they get super yeah. crowded. So. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was cool, though, to see. I mean, Liz came in at like 2.30, and I think uh, – Mike came in at like, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 2.30 and 2.45, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Or somewhere around there. Um, Curtis wants to know if you ever put your watch back on. Oh, no. Still off. Still off? <laughs> Still off. <laughs> no, I'm going to enjoy, like, because I, you know, when you're training, you know what distances or what roads yeah. and everything. So I was like, you know what? I'm just not even gonna look at the time. I'm just gonna go for a run, and then I'll I'll test every every week or two. You know, I'll I'll see where I'm at, but I don't need to micromanage and focus on in on stuff. I kind of want to give myself a mental break, you know, because yeah, you know how it is when you're training for something that's that significant. You want to analyze every little thing and see what you gotta do differently to make it better and everything. Yep. And uh, you know, those pass fail rucks, you you want to know that you can make it, you know, like a some time, cover around yeah. that 15 minute pace. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think both the pass bill, uh, eight milers we had, it was basically like a 16 minute mile and a 17 minute mile, um, yep. 17 minute mile in Cleveland, I think is what it was. And then a, yeah. uh, 1630, I think was the pace basically for Sarasota again, yeah. in elevation, and uh, well, not even elevation. I can't say Cleveland has elevation really, but there's there's definitely some elevation in Cleveland compared to Florida, which is all flat. So, 
Well, I know uh, Florida, everything looked like a gator when I was doing that eight miler. <laughs> every little thing, every, <laughs> every little movement. Yeah. 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 So I was, I was seeing, I was seeing stuff, my spirit animals, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, you know when you hit 40 hours or 30 hours into an event, you definitely, uh, um, stuff gets weird. So, oh yeah. For I sure. think one, one event I did, uh, it was about 30 hours into it. And, uh, I saw in the middle of the woods, I saw a Chucky doll actually behind a tree <laughs> freaked me out. I like glanced yeah. over and I was like staring at it like hard, like, like, are you real? And then I turned to tell somebody and I looked back and it was gone. And then like instantaneously, my, my brain went, Oh my goodness, it's going to come after you now. You don't know where it's at. It could jump out of a tree at this point. So like, I was like yeah. looking around everywhere. Yeah. You hit, I saw a taco stand in the middle of San Francisco in the, in the mere monument. Woods. <laughs> I was so excited yeah. about it. And then I got closer and realized it was just a log on somebody's back. So it gets yes. weird. It does. All right. Well, I think uh, that is about it. There's no other questions coming through. Um, cool. Hey man, appreciate you coming on and, you know, chit chatting with us. And Oh yeah. Love being able to share the previous two events, you know, um, yeah. cause we had our brief interviews after those when we were delirious and trying to just down beer and pizza and you yeah, know yeah. you can't really think about everything that went on during the event so yeah well yeah you're at that point you're like yeah we did some stuff i don't know but i'm i'm just want to eat something and go to sleep so yeah um but yeah yeah man it, like i said happy to have you on here and you know chit chat about it um i think we're gonna have jack on next week sometime i think it's gonna be a late one it'll be probably nine o'clock or something because he said that's his uh, free time so uh we'll have jack on next week sometime uh um, nice. then we'll try to bring on some more of the finishers from like cleveland yeah. and stuff too. yeah so. you need to get kevin on here you know so you can talk about oh, winning that and a throwdown yeah well so the thing with kevin if you ever watch his interviews he talks really quiet yeah he does he <laughs> he's does. a very quiet talker so i'll have to tell him he needs to really talk into the microphone basically so. Yeah. All right. Silent all right, assassin. Man. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, man. Well, we'll talk to you later and, uh, you know, have a good rest of your weekend here and rest of your week. Yeah, you too, man. And good luck with uh, the upcoming events. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We got Ruckfest this weekend. So, um, I know. I Ian's, getting, Ian's uh, bumped on it. Yeah, I got Ian and Jason coming with me. So, Kark representing Ooh. there. Yes. Um, It'll be a good time. We I got a, oh, yeah. a brand new uh, HDT Cleveland Area Rucking Crew pop up tent that I got made oh, too. Cool. So we'll be uh, legit looking while we're there. Awesome. Hopefully, it's supposed to be here Friday. Of course, it's going to show up on the day I have to leave, but <laughs> hopefully, it's here you know early enough that I don't have to worry about it. But all right, man. We'll we'll let you go. And uh, again, thank you for uh, spending the last hour and a half or so with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate all it. Right. Have a good one. You too. Bye.